When we first started this problem, I asked you to assess whether or not you thought the additive group Z4 and the multiplicative group U5 uh, are or are not uh, isomorphic. Uh, and there was a variety of opinions, right? Uh, there, about half the class or so uh, said that they thought that these were isomorphic by a couple of different reasons. And the other half said they're not isomorphic because elements might have different orders, groups might have different orders. Um, now that you've had a chance to think this over, so now that you've had a chance to think about it, people agreed that it was this answer B, that the function f of x, 5x equals 2 to the x is an isomorphism between these two groups. So z4 to u5, the function 5x equals 2 to the x mod 5. OK. So somebody tell me why that function, how do we know that that function is a, an isomorphism between these two groups? I saw some hunters and arrows diagrams yeah. as I was walking around, which is encouraging. If you map it out, the first circle, you have 0, 1, 2, 3. 0, 1, 2, 3. That's z4. 1, 2, 3, 4 again. 1, 2, 3, 4. The multiplicative uh, units, mod 5. OK. 0 and 1 have the same order. And then 2 and 4 have the same order. In fact, so what I want to do, actually, is I want to get away from that. I, I want to be more kind of specific here. I want to use 2 to the x. Uh -huh. right? Um, but you're right, that if this is an isomorphism, it has to relate elements that have the same order. And sure enough, when I take 2 to the power 0, right, 2 to the x, 2 to the power 0 is going to give me 1. That maps the identity to the identity. 2 to the power 1 gives me 2. 2 to the power 2 gives me 4. And 2 to the power 3 gives me 8, which mod 5 is the same as 3. So here's the hunters and arrows diagram for this. Um, if we follow Cam's suggestion and think again about the orders, uh, what we find out is that the order 1 elements are together up here, the 0 and this 1. My, my order 1 elements are together. My order 2 elements are uh, order, four. Order, uh, order 4. Sorry, My order 4 element uh, was 1 here, and it's associated with that order 4 element there. Um, yeah, there's two order four elements. Aren't they these two? That's order. Uh, no, one and three. One and three. So these have order, right, there we go. So the green ones here. There are my order four elements. And then my order two element is the one here in the middle. Three goes three. Three goes. <laughs> no, no, no. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to highlight the, the elements that have the same orders as one another. So maybe I'll just use yeah, the pointer has, on the screen. Two, two here has order two. Order two, yeah. order two. And so does four over here have order two. One and three in this group have order four. Two and three in this group yeah. have order four. Right. OK. So all those orders match up. But we don't want to finish unless I get the opportunity to tell you how that's not a proof. Right. Just showing that the orders agree is not enough. What else do we have to do? Yes, so this is one way, of, one way of doing, well, yeah. So if we associate a generator to a generator, then we will have an isomorphism, right? Um, which is something we would have to prove, so we could be sophisticated about it, right? Uh, one is a generator of Z4, two is a generator for U5, and because this function sends the former to the latter, we can prove, probably in exactly the way that you just said, um, that this is an isomorphism. But I want to be, be a little less sophisticated about that. If I wanted to check the product rule, what would I have to do? Take two, two arbitrary elements, A and B. B of A. Operated phi of B. But keep in mind, these operations are different operations. Right? The operation A, B is happening in which group? the group on the left. So what is the operation in Z4? If I wanted to check the product rule, the operation in AB is the operation in Z4, which is addition. But the operation on the right-hand side is the operation of my range group, U5, which is multiplication. So let's rewrite this formula. In place of the symbol in between A and B, what I want is a plus. And in place of the circle on the right-hand side, I want multiplication. And now remembering that my function is the 2 to the x function, 
What does this look like? What would phi of a plus b be? 2 to the a plus b. 2 to the a times 2 to the b. Is that true? Oh, I'm that is true. It is true. Yeah. So that's how we can verify the product rule. Right. And that would give us the universal proof, right? For any a and b arbitrarily chosen, we have just shown that the product rule for this function is satisfied. Therefore, since it's also a bijection on these two sets, 5x equals 2 to the x is an isomorphism between these two groups. So what you'll notice, to wrap up, showing two groups are isomorphic is kind of challenging. We generally have to come up with a function that satisfies those properties. Showing two groups are not isomorphic can be very quick. All right. Just find me a difference that matters. A difference in the orders of the groups, a difference in the, in the fundamental properties of the groups, the orders of their elements. As soon as we find one disagreement, those two groups cannot be isomorphic.